Hello, welcome to another tutorial. Today I'll show you how I made some tiny bricks for my miniature greenhouse. Or I should say Alice's greenhouse, because she's the one living in there. To get the bricks, or are they tiles? Anyway, to get your miniature stones out of plaster, I first made some brick-like shapes out of wooden coffee sticks. I measured out how big I wanted them to be, using Atlas as a reference. I'm sorry if it seems like there's an earthquake happening in this video. My crafting table is about as stable as an old lady waiting for a hip replacement. When I was done marking the tiles, I cut them with some pliers. You might want to clean your room before you do this, because I lost some pieces that flew off into the abyss that is my crafting room. Since I didn't really plan this process, I just placed the wooden pieces into a small plastic container to see how many more I needed. While we're waiting for past me to make some more pieces, I just wanted to apologize for the grainy camera footage. After I filmed everything, I discovered the ISO levels were set way too high, so most of the footage turned out to be kind of grainy. Next time I'll make sure to check the camera settings before I start recording. Unless I forget. I'll probably forget. Then I glued the pieces to the bottom of the container. Try to glue them as flat to the surface as possible. In the middle of my container was a small bump in the plastic, so I left that space open. So now that they're stuck on the bottom and can't run away, I spray them with a bit of clear varnish. This is to protect the surface from the silicone. Now on to the scary part. Just kidding, working with silicone isn't scary at all, but it used to scare me when I was just starting out using silicone. I don't know why though, silicone is so nice. I always use two containers when mixing it. First I pour the two liquids in one container, measuring carefully. Then I mix it, transfer it to another container and mix it again. That way I'm sure there's no unmixed silicone left. Somehow everything in my crafting room gets covered in dust if I leave it alone for over 5 minutes. So make sure your container is dust and dirt free before moving on. Pour enough silicone in to cover all of the bricks. It doesn't need to be a lot though. If you have leftover silicone you can use it to make molds of random objects. Like teeth or toenails or something nice. Gently tap the sides of your container. Like when you're waking up your goldfish in the middle of the night to share a snack. This helps to get some of the bubbles out. And now we wait. When the mold has dried, it's time for the fun part. This kind of feels like removing the tape of a finished watercolor painting. Or taking off the plastic screen protector from a new phone. Unless you're one of those people who use their electrical appliances for years without removing the plastic from the screen. You're really missing out on something. I used some scissors to cut away some silicone that was in places where I didn't want it to be. And finally I'm ready to make some actual bricks. To do this I used Plaster of Paris. Apparently it's called that because Paris used it to make their houses fireproof in the 17th century. They became the biggest plaster producing city in the world in the 18th century. The plaster I'm using here was produced in Germany, so I'm calling it Plaster of Germany. Take a cup with a bit of water in it and start adding scoops of plaster. Your mixture is good to go when a small island of dry plaster forms in the water. I didn't have any experience with coloring plaster, so I started out using some brownish water-based ink. You can use any color you like of course, grey if you're into that, or blue if you want them to match your Alice's dress. 
I wasn't sure if the ink was doing much colouring, so I added some pastel crayon powder into the mix. You can also use this to colour silicone by the way. I've used it to make pink, blue and purple silicone for my mushroom lights. When the mix is done, you can go ahead and fill the mould. Use something bendy and smooth, like your student art discount card from 8 years ago, to wipe off the excess plaster if you made a mess like I did. Your mold is ready to give birth to some beautiful baby bricks. You can help popping them out by pushing from the back. Just don't do that to any human giving birth. If you're like me and you made a small mold, you probably have to repeat the casting process for about a hundred times. Or you can just forget about finishing the project and make a tutorial about it instead. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye! Unless you're one of those people who use their electrical appliances for years without removing the plastic from the screen. Screen. <laughs>